This video is brought to you by Ugreen. Each January, I sit down to rethink my tactics. I usually do that while also writing down my personal and work-related goals. A part of the first process involves choosing carefully the tools that I will rely most on during the remaining 365 days. And since I've been getting plenty of questions around some of the apps that I've mentioned in past videos, I figured it is best to share with you the tools that will help me make 2024 the best year so far, starting with Notion. If this is the first time you hear about Notion, it is a super effective all-in-one workspace for note-taking, project data, and task management. Basically combining the capabilities of apps like Microsoft To-Do, Asana, Trello, and others. Notion can be as simple as a plain note and as powerful as you need it to be. And I use it to run this channel. The most used case for Notion here is the content calendar that is shared with my team, allowing all of us to keep track of everything upcoming, as well as create rich shot lists that we use for each of our video projects. Another example, and a bit simpler one, would be our YouTube description template that we modify for each video. And yet another one would be the checklist page that allows us to stay on top of all the intricate steps necessary to successfully publish a video like this. In addition to everything channel related, I also use Notion to create personal templates that I often refer to. One that I'm particularly excited about is the migration template for both my Mac and portable devices that allows me to easily switch from one machine to another without skipping an important step, tool or an app that I'll require and of course my travel checklist that helps me get ready for a trip in a matter of minutes. These are all pages that I improve on over time and the power of Notion really pays off as some of those pages can hardly exist on any other platform. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? A new addition to my arsenal of tools is the newly released Hey Calendar. In plenty of the Ultimate iPhone home screen episodes, I've mentioned that I use Hey Email as my zen space for managing my ever-growing inbox. And now the team behind Hey have created a calendar that is integrated into the email app itself. And let me tell you, as with everything from 37 Signals and Jason Fried, this calendar is like no other and I love it. You can think of it as your physical calendar, but instead, digital, allowing for some really quirky ways to plan each week and that is precisely how I started using it. It is not my daily reminder app, but rather my weekly planner one, where each Friday or over the weekend I can sit down and plan for the next seven days. Okay, so you can think of the Hey Calendar as your regular printed weekly planner, but instead it is on your computer. Let me show you how it works. So you have the visual aesthetics of the printed version, but a lot more flexibility. So each Sunday or over the weekend, I sit down to plan ahead of time what I want to do. And for each of the days, I can choose if an event should be a personal or a work-related one. So for example, if I want to schedule an appointment for, let's say, dog grooming for tomorrow I can choose of course the time and of course this is a personal thing and I can just add this event it works as simple as that now if this event is in question and there's a possibility that it might not happen I can choose the type of event from personal to maybe and visually that changes dramatically showcasing things that may take place but not necessarily Furthermore, at the very bottom of each week, there's this section called sometime this week. Here you add things that you want to do, but you know, not necessary. So I can just do car wash. Uh, I can do, let's say, prepare gear for ski trip and, and so forth. And all of these things will stay sometime this week and they will transfer over the next week and pile up until you find time for them. Now, if I want to move something from sometimes this week to the calendar, all I have to do is just grab it and place it here and choose an appropriate time for it. Now, if I want to really pay attention to something that needs to happen, like the video that I want to post over the weekend, I can just go to an event and say, circle event. And that will visually distinguish this event further for me. What's cool is that I can also add images to certain things. So on Tuesday, we finish the construction of the event 
and I just wanted to mark this occasion with a nice photo of a section of the studio that we just took and just place it as a background and this is what it looks like. A huge part of staying organized as a video production studio is being ready to dump footage to sort it and an essential tool for me recently has been Ugreen's Revo Dock Pro 2010. This is a 10-in-1 USB-C docking station that I always keep in my EDC, allowing me to connect pretty much anything to my laptop and setup. What's impressive here, aside from the huge array of ports, is the 100 watt power delivery, supporting up to 85 watts USB-C pass-through charging, while reserving 15 watts for other interface operations. Having the ability to hook up two displays to both HDMI ports and running them at 4K at 60 Hz is super impressive and so is 8K at 30 hertz capability. The multi USB data ports allow transferring files at speeds up to 5 gigabits per second via the USB C data port and USB A port. I can go on and on about the Ugreen RevoDoc Pro 2010, like the 1000 megabits per second Ethernet port, but I'd suggest to check this awesome tool yourself by clicking on the first link in the description below to take advantage of Ugreen's special offer. Okay, so to aid the Hey Calendar when I need to deal with time sensitive tasks, I rely on TickTick. I picked this task app last year for two main reasons. The first and most important reason is ease of use and most of all speed when entering tasks into it. Friction is the number one reason to miss on something important and having the ability to swiftly enter to-dos is paramount for me. With that said, TickTick is one of the most flexible tools in that regards. Aside from the standard way to enter via the interface, I can use the widget, voice and my favorite way via the action menu that I created with the help of shortcuts. If you want to create a similar action menu yourself, by the way, feel free to check out my tutorial at the end of this video. The second reason to go for TickTick is because the app works across all platforms. Since I also carry an Android phone, I can stick with these stock iOS or Android to-do apps. So no matter where I am or which device I'm using, I can enter tasks in a matter of seconds. The predictive input method helps a ton as well, so does persistent notifications for those most important tasks. In terms of file management, I'm finally less constricted by SSD space and I can deal with multiple projects at the same time thanks to the plethora of space on my M3 MacBook Pro. Still, ongoing projects and footage files I always consider temporary and as such, when the time comes, I dump into my 48TB Synology NAS that I've hooked up to the local network here. With that said, my laptop in general has absolutely no permanent files on it because sometimes things just go wrong. And I'll explain more in a second. I have two main folders that I deal on a daily basis. The first one is the desktop because it's shared with my iCloud devices, allowing me to access it at any point in any device in time. And in there I place temp stuff that I know I will either delete or organize later. The second most used folder is downloads, which again keeps only temp stuff for the most part and, you know, later gets organized. All the work files, memories and pretty much everything that matters to me lives on iCloud. And the reason I've stuck with iCloud over the years is because it's deeply integrated into the Mac. It's clever enough to know what needs to be offloaded and what needs to stay downloaded without having to think twice about it. And the rare inconvenience I have is if I need to grab something via, you know, the web on my Android, for example, but it's not a big deal since I always have my iPhone and in many cases the iPad. Another reason I stick with iCloud is because I share the storage with my entire family, which is entirely comprised of iPhone users, and knowing that their backups run automatically is a peace of mind. iCloud finally offers plans larger than 2TB, and the 6TB plan that I currently use will be sufficient enough in the upcoming years. Now, not everything is perfect with iCloud, of course, so since I'm often limited by my website platform, I truly require a public cloud access to share my wallpapers and other materials you know, in lossless quality, and for that, I use Google Drive. Now, this year I switched browsers. I've been living between the world of Safari and Chrome for a long time, and although both of them are very capable, they have their disadvantages. And none served me great on all platforms, so I picked Opera and set it up. Now, Opera works on Mac OS, iOS, iPad OS, Windows, and pretty much everywhere else, and it works as expected throughout. Furthermore, it has integrated messengers built in. I can access Facebook Messenger, WhatsApp, Instagram, and X right from the sidebar, allowing me to chat and browse at the same time, which is very, very cool. 
Now, at this point, Opera is much like the recently released Samsung devices, deeply integrated with AI with the help of their assistant called Aria. Aria? Opera Aria? Get it? So aside from having easy access to the assistant in the sidebar, I can pretty much highlight anything from any website and expand the topics and even more. Aside from the handy built-in tools like Adblocker and the ability to block trackers, I really appreciate the thought of having a built-in music player. In the past, I had to use separate plugins to take screenshots of websites, and this capability here is built-in and I can take full page screenshots on the fly. But by far my favorite feature has to be the night mode that is able to force dark themes on all pages across all devices, adding additional reduction of blue light to ease my eyes during those late hours. Okay, so when it comes to staying afloat and responding to questions, I rely heavily on macOS and iOS built-in text replacement. Now, if you're not using it, you should definitely give it a go. Basically, anything you respond often to, you can program into a custom trigger and summon it on demand, instead of typing it by hand each time. For example, very often I get questions from supporters asking me how they can install some of my widgets. Well, for every single widget on my official website, I have created a step-by-step -step video tutorial. Instead of manually responding to each question with pretty much the same response, I just type in exclamation mark store and text replacement fills in with my response. Thank you for your purchase. Feel free to locate your product on my official store and watch the tutorial in the product page. I can't tell you how much time this saves. I use similar time saving techniques when it comes to my widgets and my overall phone organization. So if this is something you're interested in, feel free to check out this video right here. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E. Over and out.